Welcome everyone. How you doing? Good to see you all today. I hope you can hear me and see me okay. Just put it up in chat if you can see and hear me okay today. Be awesome. I want to say hello to everybody. Good to see you all today. I'm going to start from like the beginning. Of course, Lily was here first. Lily, good to see you. Welcome in. Summer, of course, and Tina Bug. Hey, Brayon. How you doing? I almost missed you. You're the same color as Lily. I was like, <laughs> and you both start with A. How's it going? Hey, Summer. Hey, Tina. I'm working, so I have to watch the vibe. I know. I think you mentioned that before, Tina. Sorry to hear that. I know you're working. I hope your day is going okay. Thank you for the hug, Lily. How you doing, Lev? Good to see you. Welcome in. <laughs> your favorite paint is here. Yeah. Thank you for the hugs. Yeah, fave pain. Yeah, that's it. This is always a good pain, right? Thank you, Summer, for giving the shout outs. I appreciate that. Let's see what else we got. And yeah, you can type menu. And also, thank you for contributing to the challenges. You can type menu in chat to get the menu we're doing today. Hey, Sarah, how you doing? Good to see you. Hey, Mustard Glove. Melky Studio is in the house. Hey, Mel. Hey, Lone Wolf, what's up? Hey, Chef. Thank you, Summer, for giving those shout outs. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> you can see me. Can you hear me okay as well? Could be a touch louder, but you're all good on your end. Okay, let me see if I can do that. Hold on a second. How's that? Is that better? Is that better? Oh, your volume wasn't all the way up? Okay, well, I, I did increase. My mic was a little bit low, so I did fix it a little bit. Hopefully that's better. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> blessed, yes, blessed are the cheese makers. <laughs> Monty Python, yes, yeah, one of my favorites. Thank you, Summer, for contributing to the challenge. Yes, better? Excellent, thank you. Okay, so <clears throat> let me just do this real quick. This is the menu we're working on today. We're doing chicken marsala, herb roasted potatoes, garlic green beans, and I had some leftover eggs and the hard boiled eggs in the refrigerator. I'll show you how I do my deviled eggs. They're still quick and easy, and we're probably going to do that first to get that out of the way. Okay. Um, and then we're going to move on to um, starting to prep our potatoes and the marsala, and we'll start going with that. And the green beans need to be blanched also. So <clears throat> I'm wearing regular clothes today. I, usually I wear my chef coat, but I'm not going to wear my chef coat today. I decided to go civilian this time. <laughs> Hope you're okay with that. Thank you, Mel. I try to keep my menu easy so like home cooks can do it you know it's one of those things where I'm not going to make anything really complicated um, because I do enough of that at work I and mean, at home I just like to I like to cook easy at, at home and like traditional easy to make stuff that always usually tastes good right so uh, let me show you what the drink of choice today is I chose to have some of my favorite drink sake this is a living jewel. It's a Jamai um, sake. Um, so we're going to have that. And we're going to have it warm, of course. It's the best way to have sake, right? I even have my little sake uh, container and my little glass. Put it up in chat. Put the cheers up in chat. Gotta leave a little room for the breathe. Let's put that in the microwave real quick. Just about, I don't know, 40, 40 seconds or so is usually enough. Yeah, I love it warm now. Gotta be warm. Fancy, right? Fancy getting all bougie out here, right? <laughs> the old days were easy. All you need to do is beat the devil out of it. 
trying to get the paint It's louder over here than over here because I'm using this mic right now. If I turn it, is it too loud or turn it down? Hold on, give me a second. Yeah, it is pegging a little bit. Let me turn it down a smidge. Let's see if that's any better, okay? Let me know. Alright. It is loud up by the microwave. That's really weird. Okay. So let me show you what we got going over here. I'll put my stove cam on. Over here we got water boiling. Gotta start boiling. I gotta blanch the green beans before we start. And before we start, I like to salt the water a little bit. And I'm going to bring this water up to a boil. Now I want to uh, blanch the green beans um, before I saute them. You shouldn't start with raw vegetables to saute. It's always better to blanch them halfway through first because if you don't, then sometimes they get shrivelly and wrinkly, like when they're cooked. And to keep them nice and fresh looking, it's better to and when you throw them in the boiling water and then into the ice water, it really makes the green pop from the green beans. Spooks. Hey, Spooks, you did not miss anything. How you doing, Spooks? Good to see you. Um, I just got the water on to boil. I'm going to blanch the green beans. Uh, I wanted to show you my drink of choice today is sake. Oh, it's perfect. Oh, that's nice. All right. Here we go. Oh. This is a brand new bottle. It's the first one I've tried with this brand. Cheers, everyone. Salud. Thank you for coming in. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. Mm. Okay. Yes, there is drinking on this stream, so anybody under 18, you didn't see it, okay? We'll have a dancing chef today. <laughs> How you doing, Spooks? Good to see you. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, I got my regular clothes on today, and it's a Monty Python shirt. Blessed are the cheese makers. Right? So what we're doing today is we're going to make deviled eggs. I'm going to show you how I make my deviled eggs. And we're going to blanch the green beans as well. We're going to do this first because it's the quickest thing to do. And hold on one second. It's the quickest thing to do and I want to show you how I make them. Alright, everybody does it different, and if you like them the way you make them, then, yeah, then make them your way. I mean, do not make them my way just because. Um, but, some people like to put a lot of stuff in their deviled eggs. But me, I like to keep them simple, and not, if you put too much, like, um, vinegary stuff like some people put green olives in I think what happens is when you do that and you chop them up it kind of makes them very vinegary so I don't I tend to not do stuff like that the water is boiling I want to get the beans in there now okay here's the green beans fresh green beans I cut today I'm gonna throw those in the water and we get some ice water going in here. Because when the ice water is, when the beans are like almost cooked, and we're plunging them in the ice water to stop the cooking. 
and then I'm going to set them aside, and then the beans are done. So I'm gonna, we're going to do the eggs. Then we're going to put the potatoes in because the potatoes are going to take the longest time to roast. The marsala doesn't take long at all. The marsala takes 10 to 15 minutes at the most. So, all right, so let's see. Let me catch up the chat. Thank you, Summer, for the shelter spoons. How many people are having heart attacks? Well, I had, yeah, I'm not going to put it on the stove. And this is soccer. I'm going to be TNL. Do you live in the USA where the drinking age is 21? Yeah. Yeah, that's true, Spooks. I do have international. <laughs> Unless you're in the South. Yeah, 21 is the drinking age. I haven't been 21 since I was 20. I'm 21 and holding this way for a very long time, Lily. Hey, Wendy, how you doing? Good to see you. I don't like the whole green bean bonus. I like spitting them out and getting the little beans inside. I did that when I was a kid. Thank you for the shout out to Wendy, Summer. Thank you, thank you. How you doing, Wendy? Hey, Tania. Welcome. Marcella's a chicken with Marcella curry. Well, it's Marcella wine. <laughs> Spooks is in the holding pattern. I mean, Lily. How you doing, Chania? Thank you for the shout-out, Summer. Yeah, 21's a great place to hold. I agree. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to get my thing to pull these beans out. This, ladies and gentlemen, if you can see this, is called a spider. And we call it a spider because, well, spider web, it kind of looks like a spider web, right? But we call it spider. It's like, just like at work, you say, go grab a spider, and we, this is what we grab. All right? These are excellent. Right? You should, I highly recommend you get a set of three of these. I have three of them to different sizes, right? Great, great. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna cook these beans until they're just about tender. To take about, I don't know, five minutes maybe or something like that. I usually take one out and test it. But I can also tell by looking at them. See how nice and green they look? That's what you want. When you plunge them back in that ice water, boy, they, they're so good. Okay, I think I'm going to try one. About two more minutes. Okay, so Marsala, let me explain to you what Marsala is. Marsala is chicken that was sauteed, lightly crispy, but not really crispy, like, like not what you think. And then it's made with mushrooms and small diced onions with, with the Marsala wine. Hi Leah, how are you doing? You're not short for spider web. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Spiders are great for cooking fresh pasta. Mm -hmm. Very nice and green, yes. Absolutely. Now if you boil these till they're overcooked, then they'll lose start losing their green color, and that's not what you want. Okay. All right, I'm going to pull these now. Right into the ice water. Stop that cooking. And in a few minutes, I'll take them out. I'm going to just move that off to the side. In a few minutes, I'll take these out and put them, and I'll, you know, I'll probably dry them off. Once they're done cooking and they're cool. Make 
make sure I didn't miss anything. How you doing, Tylea? Thank you for the shout out, Summer, to Tylea. Thank you. How are you? My chat is paused. Why is my chat paused? <laughs> How you doing, Wendy? Good to see you, Wendy. Yeah, if you overcook it, right. And because I'm going to be sautéing them, I don't want to go cook them all the way through because it takes three or four minutes to get a nice caramelization on the bean from the sauté, you know, with the butter and all that. What is my cooking? You could type menu in chat. Why does not, things not work for you? What's up with that? Why does that happen? Lily, I, I have to figure out what is going on with that. Jeez, that's crazy. Unless, I mean, you know what, unless, unless it's the permissions. I'll have to check on that. But anyway, I'm going to drain these beans off. And I'm going to go back to my regular camera here. I'm going to drain these beans off. I'm going to dry them off with a paper towel. And I'm going to let them sit. All right? Now, we're going to get the potatoes going, and we're going to start working on the eggs. All right? So before we do that, let me show you what I got going. Let me take another drink. Hey, Tifa. How you doing? Good to see you. What you making me? I am making chicken marsala, herb roasted potatoes, and garlic green beans. My tech guy just flipped the switch and voila, done. So chat is working again. <laughs> nice, Talia. Your chat didn't work the other day, Talia. Why? What happened? <laughs> You're making enough for all of chat, right? Yeah, well, I'm going to try to. But let me show you what we got for the potatoes. Let me turn my board on here, my board screen. There you go. I have these beautiful heirloom potatoes. Red, purple, white potatoes. My family loves these, they're so good. You're making enough for all chat? Yes, Spooks, I am. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna wash these off real quick. quarter these so I'm going to that over here so quarter right quarter is in half and then in half again right yeah quarters right everybody got that oh and before we start also I highly if you can I highly recommend getting one of these this is a sheet paint sheet tray if you can see that um, I also put a piece of parchment down this helps clean up later trust me you're gonna and, and also the potatoes won't stick because this is aluminum and the potatoes won't stick to it so let me just wanted to show you that all right so we put the potatoes right back in the bowl again. Let me catch up a chat as well. Hey, Red, how you doing? Good to see you, Red. If I miss anybody, just let me know. I'm going to try to keep reading chat as I go here, okay, guys? The little ones, you could just go in half. Summer is amazing. She is. Absolutely is. Absolutely is. Not why you're cutting though. <laughs> I'm alright. I'm used to this. I 
Um, this is great because you can take these and like the next day, you can um, go ahead and saute these and fry them up for like home fries or whatever. Because they've already been roasted. Summer is amazing, you're right, and spooks. I'm honored to have her here. She's my longest, you know, Summer is my longest supporter. She's been with me since day one. Hardly ever, ever missed a stream. Summer is amazing. She's like my rock in this channel, I tell you. She really makes things tick. So, like these little smaller ones, I'm just going to go in half with some of these smaller ones, right? I'm going to have to go quarters with those. Okay, I think I got them all. Yeah, I got them all. Okay, so you see those? Let me show you what we're going to do with those. Gonna dry them off, right? I know I always say like dry the dry stuff off. You should really start with dry food because it helps the thing stick to it. Because what I want to want to do is I want to put olive oil on them. So what happens with oil and water it doesn't mix, right? So if they're too wet, the oil won't stick to the potatoes. So I want to make sure try to dry them off as much as you can. Okay, guys. Now, let me catch up with chat. Hey, Tuna, how you doing, Tuna? Good to see you. What is up? How are you? Good to see you. Thank you, Tifa, for the shout to Tuna. My love. I'm just scrolling back a little bit, make sure I didn't miss anything, okay? Plain and simple problem in your stupidity, Tylea? How, what, why is that? You literally had chicken marsala for the first time like last week. That's awesome. Well, now you're going to know how to make it, Spooks. You are now going to know how to make it. LD's next trick, call 911. <laughs> how you doing, Tuda? Okay, so let's catch up with the rest of chat here. Um, okay. All right. So... From here, what I want to do now is I'm going to get my herbs ready. Let me show you what I have for herbs. I have this, this I have parsley, fresh parsley, right? And I only use really fresh herbs unless I have, unless I have no other, you know, no other reason or emergency or whatever. This is what I'm going to use. I have this wonderful herb mix. You can see that. It has sage, right? Small piece of sage. I wish I had more. And rosemary and some thyme in it. So I'm going to say, actually save that sage. It's a very small piece. Holy smoke. I'm going to use the rosemary for potatoes. The rosemary is great for potatoes. All right, guys. Let me move this out of the way. And last but not least... Last but not least, give me a second, pull a couple of these puppies out. Yeah, they're a little bit past, but we could just take off the bad stuff. It's all right. If you have some uh, green onion here, um, not much, but we have a little bit. We don't need a whole lot. Right? Just pulling off some of the bad leaves from it. There we go. Parsley, rosemary, and some scallions. That's what I like to put in mine. You can put whatever you want, of course. So I'm going to put these aside for now. What I'm going to do is ch chop up these these uh, scallions here. What I like to do is start, line up the root end first. Right? 
Line through and cut the root end up first, right? And then kind of hold them together, right? And then if you start from the green part, sometimes it doesn't hold together well. I like to do it, do it this way, kind of hold it, move your knife along, watch your fingers, make sure you do the crab grip, right? Crab grip like this, right? Keep your fingers in. Let's give them another small little chop like this. Now, very important, olive oil, make sure you use olive oil, extra virgin, I'm going to put some olive oil in the potatoes, I'm not going to measure, I'm just going to put like, a, like whatever you think is enough, I want to completely cover the potatoes, you know, I'm going to throw our scallions in there. catch up a chat are you going to Scarborough Fair <laughs> well, these are the reasons I won't do cooking machine anymore I'm too bad wolf no 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 please this is the recipes I'm doing are stuff that a regular home cook could do I'm not doing anything difficult let me show you about a best way to do leaf herbs take them and bunch them up into a tight ball kind of like this and then roll them like this and you get like like something like that and then when you chop them you cover a lot more surface area of the herbs that you're cutting and remember to keep your, your crab grip in like this you'll never cut your fingers that way you kind of just go like this finish chopping them Throw those in the potatoes. Rosemary. Uh, actually, I might chop these just a little bit. Let's take some of these leaves. Not too much. Rosemary is pretty strong, by the way. You don't want to go too, he too heavy on the rosemary. It, it is quite a strong herb. Give those a few chops. So what I'm doing is keeping my fingers up like this. Don't go down like this when you do this. Keep your fingers arched like that. And you won't cut yourself. Top of the blade and you just pivot it up and down like this. And you just kind of keep moving it back and forth. Rosemary in. Right? Okay, time. This is a little tricky because you got to kind of take the stems and kind of the leaves point up. So you want to kind of rub your fingers down to pull the leaves off so you don't pull all the stems off kind of thing. It's the pain, time is a little bit of a pain to deal with. Now some of the smaller branches is all right to get in because we're going to be chopping it up anyway. But you got to kind of finagle with it it's time is a little bit of a pain but but it's such a great herb it has such an awesome flavor mm. oh let me turn on the oven by the way uh, let me go over here and show this here uh, I'm going to turn the oven on by the way um to a very high temperature, like 425. 425 Fahrenheit. If anybody's Celsius, you gotta do the conversions yourself. I don't know what they are, but 425 Fahrenheit, okay? All right, let me catch up with chat. Okay, Tifa, no problem. Yeah, roll your herb. Yeah, that's it, Red. <laughs> I'm hypnotized by the herb chopping. Nice, nice smell. 
Welcome back, Tifa. <laughs> All right, let's grab let's grab some more drink here. Drinky poo. Salud. Mmm. Damn, I love that. It's so good. All right. So, oh, we're almost done with the time here. Let's put my board cam back on here. So, like, at the very end of the branches, you can get a, a couple of the branches in there. It's not going to hurt anything. And they, this mixed in, and like I said, we're going to chop it. But try to get as much as just the leaves you can. All right, guys. It's a pain in the ass, but... Uh, normally on bigger branches, like these are really small branches. There's some of the bigger ones are easier to pull off, but these small ones are not not the easiest. And I have quite a bit of it, so. But now, you can use dry thyme too. You don't have to use fresh herbs. I recommend it. <laughs> I have to say that as a chef. You know that, right? <laughs> you know I have to say that. <laughs> Time in. These are going to be so good, guys. My God. These are going to be so good. Make sure you get all those flakes in. All right. See that? All right. Last but not least, some salt and pepper, guys. This is what I do. I take some uh, s kosher salt, and I mix it with pepper. I pre-mix it. I do half pepper to twice as much salt. Like, two, like for two teaspoons of salt, I do half teaspoon of pepper. And I just kind of mix it up, and then, and then I can just pinch it on and go like this with it. You know, I get salt and pepper. Okay, I'm going to put gloves on because this way I won't get my hands all oily, right? But I'm going to mix these up. Oh my God, you can smell that. Jeez, that smells so good, my God. I want to get that all coated, the potatoes fully, completely coated. That's pretty much garlic, uh, um, not garlic, uh, herb roasted potatoes. Now, spread these out on your sheet tray. Uh, hold up. Grab a rubber spatula and get all that good stuff out of there, out of that bowl. Don't leave all that stuff in there. Look at all the beautiful herbs in there. Make sure you get it all out. Spread them out. Now as these cook, roast, I'm going to, every once in a while, toss them. Chicken up, turn them. That's pretty much pretty easy, right? It's not hard. What's really is in the oven is the oven. The, the oven's not ready yet, so I gotta wait a little bit. I'm gonna put these over here for now. Okay. What do we have to do next? Herb roasted potato medley. Yeah, how you doing, Cindy? Good to see you. Hey, Miss Hellcat. We could use a drooling emote. <laughs> Thank you, left for the shout to. To let me make sure I'm not missing anyone. I'm going to LDS for dinner. <laughs> Chat is the best. You got that right. Thank you, Lily. Oh my gosh. That's three times in a row. Holy cow. Is this a sexy stream? <laughs> Food can be very sexy, guys. It is. Food is very sexy. <laughs> Thanks, Spooks. Yeah, hashtag super sexy stream. Yes, three times in a row, I know. <laughs> Glass lasagna pan. You could do that too. Yep. How's it going, Cindy? Welcome in. All right, so here we go. Next. 
Uh, we're gonna make our deviled eggs now. Let me show you how we do those. And then we're gonna throw our potatoes in once the once it's uh, preheated, all right? So this is a mini food processor, right? Mini Cuisinart. We're gonna cut up these eggs. Yep, the oven is ready. Yes, the oven is ready. Let's get those potatoes in. Uh, about uh, 30 minutes or so, something like that. About 30 minutes. I'm gonna check them in about 20 or so and see how they're doing. So, uh, cut your eggs in half. Don't spoon them out. A lot of people spoon their yolks out. You don't need to. I just squeeze it and push from the back and the yolks pop right out. Right? Uh, then actually, let me get a tray to put these on. Uh, I did have one out. What do I do with it now? Oh, here we go. Okay. Uh, when you cut eggs, I recommend a narrow knife because you get less sticky and less yolk on the knife if you use a narrow knife. You know what I mean by a narrow knife? Like one that's not too wide. Any yolk that sticks, just pick it out with your fingers. Now mind you, my hands are clean. I didn't really rub my face or anything, so we're good. These, by the way, are already bought store eggs. They were already boiled when we bought them, so they, I want to use them up. And I figured, ah, as an added bonus, I'll show you how I make my deviled eggs. Everybody's different, right? But I'll show you how I make mine. Hey, sweet. How you doing? Welcome in. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Curse you, Stream Elements. Yeah, I don't have Stream Elements on anymore. I took it off completely. Lev. Going good, sweet? Nice. You, I love deviled eggs too, Tifa. I can eat the whole tray by myself. <laughs> I can eat a whole tray by myself. How you doing, sweet? Good to see you. I hope your day was good. Wish I can go there. Yeah, yeah, we used to fight over them all the time, too. Kind of like how we did with escargot. Whenever I made escargot, it was the same thing. We always fought over how much we were going to have. And my grandmother would make tray after tray after tray of them. All right, so now that that's done... Okay, so here's what I do. All right, I put a smidgen of salt and pepper in there. I put it right in the yolks, by the way. Uh, I don't put it in after. I'm gonna put a little bit, about a half a teaspoon of onion powder. About a half a teaspoon of onion powder. I don't use measuring spoons, but you should but I don't, usually don't need to because I can figure it out that I'm, I'm good like that. Right, half a teaspoon of garlic powder. It's a half a teaspoon of pretty much everything. Half a teaspoon of paprika. Dill weed. About a half a teaspoon of dill weed. So about a half a teaspoon of everything, guys. Right, half a teaspoon of dill weed. And last but not least, very important, celery seed. This you need to have in your deviled eggs and your egg salad and your tuna salad. Celery seed. 
Yes, salt and pepper. I did put salt and pepper in. Celery seed, got to go in there, guys. Trust me when I tell you. Hey, Cartridge, how you doing? Hey, Abby, welcome in. Been a while. How are you? Hope you're doing good. Hope you're doing good. Welcome, welcome. Let's see. Uh, I want to make sure I didn't miss any chat here. Yeah, you could buy pre-boiled egg spooks. Yeah, here you can. How many eggs was that? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It was eight eggs. No. Eight eggs, so we'll make 16, 16 halves. Um, when I make them, I take the yolk, mayonnaise, pickle juice, and sometimes baking bits. Yes. Um, yes. I'm not a fan of the pickle juice in it. I think it makes it a little bit too vinegary, but like I said, everything, everybody's different. It has been a while. I wanted to say hello since I saw you were alive. Thank you, Abby. So coming in, happy to see you. And let me just put this on real quick. Happy to see you, Abby. Welcome in. We're cooking with gas. Now, nah, hey, Hoosier. Welcome in. Welcome, welcome. We make deviled eggs. I start with whole eggs and then eat it whole. <laughs> We're to, uh, you know what? I need more sake. Drink of choice tonight is sake. That's what we're drinking tonight. I gotta warm up some more. Summer's like, LD, be careful. <laughs> right, Summer? LD, be careful, LD. <laughs> you know how you get. <laughs> you know how you get. <laughs> All right, so, now, very important, I'm gonna put the board down. I've got everybody's chat. How you doing, What does it taste like to drink? It, um, it tastes like... It kind of tastes like a very dry wine. It's kind of like a rice wine, a rice and wine. It's really dry, but it's best... Not all sake, but, but the majority of sake are better sort of corn. So I'm warming it up. And it's a little strong too. It's a, it's pretty potent too. If you ever get a chance, you should try it. It's really good. Now I, I can smell these potatoes already, guys. Just so you know. All right, let's go have a drink. Have a drink on me. Yeah, blessed are the cheese makers, right, Abby? <laughs> Yeah, like I said, it's a, it's a very, it's kind of a, it's got the bite of a whiskey, like it's got a very strong alcohol bite, right? It's very strong alcohol-wise, but it tastes like a dry white wine. Yeah, no shoes. I know, no shoes, Lily. Cup of tea for you, Wolf. You get sub at your own channel. <laughs> yeah, I'll be in about an hour. <laughs> All right, let's get this going because we have to get our masala working too and our beans going. So now from here, very important that you don't over blend these. All right. I'm just going to chop them up. Oh, let me put the board cam back in here. I'm just going to chop them up so they're finely chopped. I don't want to go, if you go too far, you'll make them pasty. I don't want that either. That's about it. I'm going to use the same bowl that the eggs was in. Let's dump this out and on there like this. Now that already has all the flavorings, all the herbs and everything already in it. Now, for the fun part. This is all I put in my eggs. Uh, grab yourself a rubber spatula. Right? 
I put about where are we at? I'm gonna make sure we're not. Alcohol tastes like alcohol. Who would have thunk it exactly? What's the recipe? Just right. Yeah, we're making deviled eggs, Karcher. Deviled eggs. I do have to do some lurking as I just come from class. No problem, Albi. Thank you so much for stopping in. I really appreciate it. The lineup looks good. Thank you. Stabby. <laughs> hey, Hellcat. Yes, Stabby. That just cracked me up. Love the silence, sarcasm. I know, I know. So, yellow mustard, guys. Right? About a teaspoon or so. And I add mayonnaise until it's the consistency that I want it to be. Uh, let me get a separate spoon for that. I start with a good dollop. And I mix it in this way. I don't put it through a blender or anything because if you do that, it gets very pasty. I'd rather just mix the mayonnaise into the egg this way with a rubber spatula. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Oh, man. Love that already. No more mayo required. It's perfect mix. Look at that. Oh my gosh. It's perfect. It's perfect. There you go. That's my filling right there. Okay. Don't need any more mayo. That was a perfect ratio. A perfect pick. Now, since we're at it, let's go ahead and fill these real quick. I already have a pastry bag. Pastry bag with a star tip on it. I'm going to fill this up and we'll fill these eggs up right now while we're at it. Let me show you a proper way to... Here, here let me show you this. So, pastry bag, right? Okay. I'm going to make sure that I'm not missing any chat. I like to take an alcoholic who just woke up and is waiting for their first drink to kick in, even though I haven't drank in years. <laughs> yeah, so I have a a horse, hay, flossy. Yeah, make a double the eggs, yes. Pastry bag. Hold your bag like about in the center, like this. Take the top and fold it over your fingers and your hand, like this, as best you can. And then you stuff it that way. Take, put your stuff in and then kind of grab it and squeeze it off like that. It's a pain, it's a bit of a pain, but this is what you have to do to survive in the cooking world, right? This is a small bag. I wish they were a little bit bigger, but it was all, it's all I have. The bigger ones are easier to fill. Now, you could just spoon it in if you wanted to. You don't have to use a pastry bag. You could just spoon it in if you want to be unneat and messy. You can do that and have it not look as good, but I like to have things look good too, so. Right? Okay. That should, hopefully that's enough. Now, when you use a pastry bag, start at the top all right, now, you hold it like this, right, between your thumb and, here, let me just clean my hands off just a quick thing here. Pinch the top closed, hold it between your thumb and forefinger, and you twist. Now, when you extend out, and you twist, you squeeze from the top, in this part, you don't squeeze. You, this is just to guide it. Some already come out already. Okay, put my board on. Here we go. Let's move that out of the way. So remember, squeeze from the top as you twist. Not squeezing the bottom, just squeezing down from the top as you twist to bring the bag closer. See how it's twisty? 
right? Kind of like you're squeezing toothpaste out. Should have just enough. There you go. Now, here's what I like to do with mine is sprinkle a little bit of parsley on. Uh, not parsley, a little bit of paprika. Give them a little color. And that's kind of how I serve my deviled eggs for the most part. I don't know how, how, oops, I don't know how well you can see them. But that's how I do it. <laughs> You'll take six to go. I know, I hear you. I, I love deviled eggs, Red. Oh, they're so good. Nope. Let's try one, shall we? Those are freaking good. Mm. It'd be better if when they're cold again. So we're gonna go ahead and put these in the fridge or something. So this, actually, we should transfer these to a to zip line. Um, to a zip. Well, you know what? I'll just do it later. Let's just put them in the fridge for now. Oh, I got. All right. Chicken marsala. I'll put them in a container later. Chicken. We're going to do it. Let me clean up a little bit here, guys. And then we're going to start our chicken marsala now, okay? questions so far or anything hey prof welcome in yeah they were pretty teeth flipped and I know I I nor I have a I have an actual devil egg container spooks that actually that have little cavities that the egg actually fits in but I was you know I just figured I'd show you how I made them they're still gonna taste good <laughs> normally I wouldn't have done that I do have the actual carrier for devil eggs they're specially designed for devil eggs. Parsley works too. A little sprig of parsley on the top. Yeah, dill, dill, a sprig of dill would work too. Yeah, hey Mel, how are you? You know, hungry Tifa? Yeah, they're so good. Yeah, I'll eat them before the family gets home. Uh, not too much sweet. Uh, you didn't miss much? Um, I don't think. No, I blanched the green beans before. I made, I blanched green beans uh, in boiling water with boiling salted water. I took them out, dried them off, and put them, oh, I put them in ice water to stop cooking. Then I drain them off and dry them off. And they're right here. So we're gonna make our Marsala now. So here's how I make Marsala. We gotta do a little bit of prep first. We're gonna do a little prep first. I'm gonna show the board to you. Onion, garlic. No, you didn't miss too much. You missed me making deviled eggs, but that's it. You can watch the VOD for that, sweet. Hey, Helga, how you doing? Thank you, Helga, for contributing to the challenge. Challenges. Okay, so, garlic. Let me show you what to do with a big clove of garlic like this. 
right? That's how you separate them, right? I don't need all of those. I just need like maybe one, two, three cloves should be good. And I'm going to put these away in a Ziploc. But I will do that after. Let me put those over here for now. Okay, so garlic. Take. You could do this however you want, but if you smash them like this, you can easily take the skins off, right? Which is probably, if you take the, the end, the root end like that, cut the root end off and just give them a smash with your knife, the skin comes right off. You see that? That's if you want, if you, that's if you don't mind if it's smashed. If you don't mind them smashed, if you don't want to smash, you got to peel them the old way, the other way. Now, a lot of people don't put garlic in their marsala, but I like to have, uh, well, actually, this garlic is for the green beans, right? But I might put a small amount in the marsala. We'll have to see. I'm going to give these another good smash, right? Oh, my God, smell that. I'm going to mince this garlic, right? I wish you could smell this, guys. My God, the garlic smells so freaking good. All right, we're gonna be saving this for our green beans when we do our green beans, okay? The last task we have to do is dice this onion. Here, let me wipe this board off the smidge here. This board has a little basket inside that catches all the crap. So you could just like swipe it down the hole here. That's what I like about this. I'm gonna clean off my knife quick too. All right. All right I'm gonna show you how to small dice an onion. How you doing Helga? I wish there was a tech thing for smells already, but I bet it smells so good. I know, I know. It smells good in here. It smells like garlic and all kinds of stuff going on. Oh, actually, let's stir the potatoes up, shall we? Let's put the stove cam on, see if we can see those potatoes. I'm gonna show them to you. Let me get something to stir them with. God, oh, oh. these are coming along nicely. They're not there yet, but just kind of give them a, a turn. Keep those herbs on there and keep the oil going, covering them up. I just felt one there it's they're only about halfway there so that's perfect timing actually perfect timing all right so I'm going to show you quick how to dice an onion all right there's the root end right here you want to leave the root end intact and you want to cut off the head part this is where the stem grows out so cut the stem part off, right? Start halfway in the root, cut it in half. Okay. And it makes it easy to peel. So you just you peel your onion, right?
Now, half of this onion I'm going to use for the marsala. Half of this I'm going to use for the beans, okay? I don't need a lot, just a little bit. Now, if anybody does not, does not know how to dice an onion, I'm going to show you right now. Let me catch up a chat. Board goals. <laughs> potatoes. Yes, Mel. We are making herb roasted potatoes. I need to make food. <laughs> Tifa. Are you writing it down, Spooks? Make sure you write it down. Yes. That's why I have that emote. Okay. So. You have the onion still attached, the root here is still attached. That's going to keep your onion together. All right. If you don't do that, your onion will start falling apart. What you want to do is you want to make cuts along the onion this way. And then when you cut it, dice it, these layers will become the actual dice part. So you want to kind of follow the contour of the onion. If you can, you don't have to. But you're just going to kind of cut down like this and make slits the size of the dice that you want. Now I want a very fine dice, so I'm going to go really small. All right. You want to make like a fan, kind of like a fan type thing. Go all the way down, follow it, right? Now, remember the claw grip? Remember, when you keep the, the blade against your knuckles like this, you can't cut yourself. So crab grip, rest the knife against your knuckle. This would be your guide, because you see I'm not going to cut my fingers this way. And then just kind of go down and through. All right. Beautiful diced onion, look at that. That's how you dice an onion. That is a small dice. Um, I'm going to put this in a cup for now because this is for the Marsala when we're ready. We're not ready for it yet. Now this one, this one we're going to cut in slices for the beans. So thin slices. I don't need a lot, just a little bit. That's for the beans. Okay. We're, uh, we're ready to go now. The last thing we have to do is prep the chicken. And that won't take long either. So here we go. We're going to start doing that now. So I want to pound these out. So take... Because I want to do the chicken last because I'm going to contaminate my board with the chicken. And this is why I'm doing it last. I'm going to take another drink here. Is everybody with me so far? Hey, Lady Q, how are you? Okay, everybody's with me, right? Okay. We're going to pound the chicken out. I got these already cut chicken breasts that are really nice. So you put it out, hold on. A little bit of salt and pepper on it now. And then when I pound it out, it's gonna penetrate that chicken. I'm not going to pound it heavy, just a little bit. There we go. Now, nice chicken cutlet. Right? Let me, um, hold on. i got to get one more tray to put these on. Because, actually, you know what? Let's do... 
let's do the next step. The next step is putting it in flour. This is just a flour salt and pepper mix. That's all it is. Just straight flour with salt and pepper. So let's go get, get those in there. And then we're going to lay them out. Lay them out on, on one more tray here. That salt and pepper on there. Don't forget to do that, guys. I'm not hitting it hard because I don't want to massacre it. I just want to like make it even, the slices even. And the flour goes. Now you can get, you don't have to do this guys, honestly, you can use just chicken breast straight up. I mean, I, I like to do this, it makes them really tender and nice and thin, and they don't take a long time to cook, you know, that's kind of why I like to do it this way. But you don't have to, you know, there's, there's, there's no really, you know, right or wrong way here. Oops, I forgot the, the salt and pepper. Now, mind you, I'm not touching the chicken with my right hand. I'm using this right hand for the salt and pepper. You know, and I'm only touching the chicken with my left hand. So let's try to keep sanitation in mind, guys, and cross-contamination, right? Try not to touch the chicken with your right hand if you're handling the salt and pepper. Two more to go. I'm making a lot because we're going to, we want the leftovers. Um, my wife is coming home later tonight and she's going to have the leftovers. So. Again, you don't have to do this, like I said, but it does help with the tenderization. Last one. I put the plastic on so it doesn't splatter chicken juice all over my kitchen. Kind of keeps the splatter down the you know. All right. That's it. Okay. That in the sink. Clean that up. Clean that up. Everybody with me so far? Are you taking off Lady Q? I'm sorry if I missed you. Did I miss you? I'm with friends LD, so okay, no problem, Lady Q. Love you too. Absolutely. Step one, beat it like you own. It owes you money, but make sure you can still recognize the corpse. Yes, but for the most part, yeah. <laughs> what, no moldy chicken in toilet water with a side of dog food and sardines? Nope. Nope. <laughs> That's next time? Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, Flossie? Welcome in. I'm drinking sake tonight. Hey, grumpy old man. How are you? Wine and wine and NyQuil. Mmm. Yeah, basically, Sarah, that's chicken schnitzel for the most part, yeah. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. To prevent my hands getting all completely soiled, I'm actually going to wash them now. And I'm going to put gloves on to do this next step, okay? Did first cook. Hey, Rose. How you doing, Rose? Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Been a while. Yeah, I think it is, isn't it, Rose? How you been? Hope you're doing okay. Let's 
So, I'm not looking for the chicken. Does not have to be crispy because it's going to have sauce on it. It's meant to be like semi crisp, if that makes any sense. So, I'm going to just go ahead and coat these with flour. Now this this flour has salt and pepper in it, right? It has salt and pepper in it, so the, the chicken's gonna be plenty of seasoned, right? But between what I just put on and the plus what's in the flour, right? So you don't need to put any additional seasoning on in the end. And we're gonna fry these up in the pan, and then we're going to saute. The mushrooms and the onions with the wine. Then we're going to add chicken stock. And we're going to reduce that down. Right? And then we're going to then add the chicken in. And the dish will be finished. Right? But again, you want to dry the chicken off. A nicely coated chicken. Now that's all you need. I'm going to reserve this flour because I'm going to use some of it to saute the mushrooms after I do the onions and mushrooms. It's going to add a little bit of thickener to our sauce. Okay? Alright, so let me go ahead and put the regular cam on. Okay. How's everybody doing so far? We're ready to make our marsala now. Okay? I know it's a lot of prep, but you saw how many I'm going to make. Right? What's nice about it is you can, you know, have this as a leftover if you like, you know what I mean? So this is, you don't have to do that many chickens to have a family of four, so four. So it's going to feed all of us, plus tomorrow. That's why I'm making so many. But I'm only going to make a couple now. Well, I might make them all. Oh, there's one more thing we have to do. One more thing. I forgot. Mushrooms. You can't have chicken marsala without mushrooms, guys. Now, let me show you something about mushrooms. This dirt stuff, just wipe it right off. You don't want you don't have to or you shouldn't wash your mushrooms. Just take a paper towel and kind of rub the dirt off. That's all you have to do. You don't have to wash your mushrooms. If you do wash them, they might turn brown. Right? Um, you can wash them and then dry them right away. That'll work too. But you kind of just want to wipe them off. The, this is not really dirt like you think it is. It's more of a fertilizer. It's kind of like a moss. They call it uh, peat. It's like a peat moss. And it's basically shit. <laughs> mushrooms grow in shit, so get used to it, guys. If you like mushrooms, then you already know this. <laughs> but if you just wipe them off like that, the dirt comes right off. You don't need to wash them for the most part. This also takes some of the old skin off. Okay. Okay, there we go. Let's slice these real quick. I'll take my slicing knife, right? Uh, actually, let me get a bowl here. Put these in the bowl here.
probably don't need these this many. It's quite a few, but. I'm used to slicing a lot of mushrooms at work, so you tend to get really fast at it after a while. Sliced mushrooms. Okay, I'm gonna catch up with you. Hey, Pachi. Hey, Pachi. How you doing? Good to see you. Uh, okay, gotta go. Subsistence is calling me. Hey, Tylea, you play subsistence? That's awesome. And thank you. Welcome, Rose. It's so good to see you today. Hey, happy birthday, Rose. Happy birthday. Sorry I missed that right away. Happy birthday. Yes, pounding chicken. Very important. How you doing, Pachi? What are you cooking? I'm making chicken marsala. I know that because of a line from my favorite game to treat us like mushrooms. They keep us in the dark and feed, fed up and feed up. Well, you, yes, exactly. You gotta love good knife skills. That's it, Spooks. They use all the mushrooms. They're good stuff. Yeah, I'm going to. Mushroom bowl, yeah, right? You like that mustard glove? Absolutely. Satisfying cutting. Thanks, Pachi. <laughs> you love mushrooms too? So yeah, me too. They're so awesome. If I tried to make this at home, I would somehow accidentally start World War III. <laughs> After watching this, I'm going to feel a little bad about throwing a frozen pizza. <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> All right, so now we are ready to make our Marcella. I forgot about the mushrooms. You can't make Marcella without mushrooms, guys. You have just have to have mushrooms. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, we're going to have, we, we need to have another shot of, of um, sake here. And then we're going to start cooking. Now, once we start cooking, it's not going to take long. All right. Uh, it, it takes longer to prep. More salad than it does to cook it, especially if you make it with the chicken the way I did, nice and thin like that. Right? Let me go ahead and throw this in the mic. We gotta check our potatoes. Oh, those are nice. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Alright, so let's move on over to the stove. Let's start going. Yeah, well, it's because I, at work, you know, I'm just so used to this, you know, as a chef, yeah, the washed hands is, you got to do it all the time. Now, remember, we never had rubber gloves in the past. All we had was soap and water, and soap and water worked well for thousands of years. It should still work well now, right? Microwave quesadilla. Hey, Hellcat, how you doing? Oh, thank you, Spooks. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Fridge. Your oven is amazing. Yeah, it's a two-door oven. Yes, it cooks two, two, two separate temps. It's two individual ovens. Yes. Yes, yes. Top one. And bottom, they have separate controls. Yeah, it, it's it's really awesome. If you ever now, Hellcat, they're not super super expensive. You can get a cheaper 
version of a double oven, if you ever need to replace it before you buy another oven, just consider researching it. I've got to tell you, it's the best. If you can, anybody out there in chat, I cannot recommend it more. It is, especially during the holidays, because you know, I have a roast in the bottom one, and in the top one, I can, you know, broil, I can do whatever I need to do in the top one. Okay, so let's get going, guys. Let me just move, I'm going to move you over to the stove cam now, okay? Okay. All right, so everybody can see that now. This is my aluminum pan. I like it to cook in aluminum pans, right? So the first things first is get our heat on. Um, I start with like, like medium high medium high now we're going you know for a fact you know for a fact we're going to be sauteing these in butter right we're going to be sauteing these in butter right because it's the only way to go <laughs> Now, remember what I said about butter, it, it, butter burns easily, so try not to go too high heat, guys. Like, medium high is plenty. All right. Uh, these chickens, this chicken is also very thin, so I don't need to do it a lot, all right? Now, we're also gonna turn the top oven on, and we're gonna turn the top oven on uh, of low temperature, just to keep the chicken warm once it's cooked. Right? We're going to keep the chicken in there to keep warm while they cook the sauce. Okay? Alright. Uh, let me move some of this crap out of the way here. What did I do with my uh, other tray? Here it is. I found it. I got it. I got it. So when the chicken is done, we could put it in the, on here, and put it in the top oven, right? Like I said, to keep it warm. All right, so but uh, I'm just gonna put half of it for now. Make sure you get the size. Now I cook with aluminum with uh, stainless steel pans, guys. A lot of people have separate eggs and stuff. I still use a non-stick pan, but I cook everything in a stainless steel pan. They don't stick as long as you know how, what you're doing. Double cookie batches, you got it, Summer, exactly. Butter, butter, butter. Thanks for the emotes. Ace coming in with the 19th month. Risa! Hi, Ace. How you doing? Good to see you. Butter, yeah, prop. Butter, exactly. Look at that, right? Get that butter going in there. Now, I, again, I don't want to burn the butter, so I don't want to go too high to heat, guys. All right? Top oven is preheated. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and, and saute these chicken. I want to use the butter. I don't want to burn the butter, guys. Because if you burn the butter, it's just going to taste like shit. Alright? And we don't make food that tastes like shit, right? Alright, I'm going to do these two at a time. And at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to add our mushrooms and onions. And we're going to saute those up. And then we're going to add our wine. I'm going to cook the wine off a little bit, then we're going to add our stock in. Well, before we do that too, we're going to add some flour in to the mushroom. You'll see when we get there, all right? Now, I made these nice and thin. They don't, they're not going to take that long to cook, all right? Where are we at? Okay. Let's put another piece of parchment on there because my wife is like, 
You know you're going to clean up after your stream. You know? now, I clean up on a normal basis, but I'm not cleaning up after your Christmas stream. So i got to do my own cleaning. This guy is so freaking good, you guys don't know. I'm going to get people swapped up. This is now my third, my third craft. So good though. Mm. Okay. My oven's broken and too old for gas engine to look at, so I have to make do with the air fryer. Air fryer will work with these. You can use an air fryer with this bowl. You already love my wife, Luke. <laughs> All right. Now we got a very small browning on there. It's not a lot. Thank you so much for the shout to to uh, Tufa. Yes, it's Dr. Tati. Hey, Dusty, how are you doing? Welcome in. Yeah, you can cook this menu. You can, you, I, like I said, I, I might make it look more complicated than it is, but it really isn't. It's not that hard. The worst part about this is the prep value. And anything that you guys do for cooking, even if it's something very really simple, it's always prep involved. So if you take the time and do the prep right, it makes cooking so much easier and more fun. Thank you so much for the Thank you so much for taking care of chat. I really appreciated it. Alright, I'm going to remove this off the heat because again, I don't want to burn the butter. These chickens are freaking amazing. My God. Okay. Alright. Let's go grab these. We're going to put the next batch of chicken in. Just here to keep them warm. Oh, a sauce. Now it's a little bit brown, so we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit more butter in there off the heat. Right? Because again, I have it off the heat because I don't want to burn that butter. Brown is okay, but I don't want it burnt. There's also flour in there too. So let's get the next couple pieces of chicken on there. Actually, I think we can get three, maybe we can get three pieces on in this one. I don't like to crowd the pan because the more you crowd the pan, the less it browns. But I think that should be okay. Alright, we're going to put some butter in there. Now, normally I would probably use clarified butter with this, but I can't do that. They're so young. Who is? This is looking like it's worth the drive to be the habit at the chair at the dinner table. I tell anybody that you're all welcome. Oh, my wife is home already. Well, I guess it's by 40, yeah. Uh, we really need another stick of butter. Guys, this chip is so good, I can't see it. You know what we can do about it. Okay, flip these over. Right, I'm going to pull off the heat because again, I don't want this butter to get burned. Look at that nice browning on there. Oh my God, it's so good. Is that where we at? You haven't cooked since high school? 
Hi, Joe Dusty. Good to see you. This is looking like it's worth a drive up to the app. Got that. Let's do 2014. The sizzling, I know. Right, Pachi? Hello, people. Okay, I'm also going to drain a little bit of this off. I'm going to put the next one on. Okay, so these are chicken and it's just about done. Now mind you, I'm not baking this. I have this at a very low temperature just to keep the chicken warm, right? I'm gonna drain a little bit of this off. Because I'm cooking so many, it's just too much. Right? All right. Last pat of butter in there and we're gonna finish this off. Last piece of chicken. Mm. All right. Now, let me catch up the chat. Hey, Fox, how you doing? Good to see you. Welcome in. Hi, Mrs. LB. Hi. I should say, I mean, I could practically smell that from here, I know, it's so good. That's good, Dusty, it's good to see you, my friend. Uh, you can type menu in chat box. Uh, actually, I don't know if it's actually good. Thank you for the shout somewhere to Fox. You have bacon in the oven for breakfast? Nice. Oh, that's right, you're in Australia, so it's breakfast time for you. <laughs> you playing some Nautic off stream, Mel? So yeah, I'm making I'm making um, chicken marsala and roasted potatoes, which are actually should probably be done now. Yeah, those are looking good. Okay, we're good to go. I think the timing is going to be perfect, guys. Yeah, I don't know why it does that. It just seems like the, 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 the moderators can do it. I don't know. What's going on with that, Lily? Okay. Again, I don't want to burn the butter, so... I want to pull it off the heat. It's almost there, not quite. The chicken, not quite there yet. Very close. Yes, I can tell by poking it if it's done or not. I have enough experience to tell just by poking in something if it's cooked or not. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, the commands do have a cool down, and I can't get rid of that five second one. No matter how hard I try, I can't get rid of that five second one. Flying plate through streams of that game are the best. Of uh, the Subnautica. Yeah, that game just scares me though. I hate the, the Leviathans. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna keep these warm in there. I'm gonna put this back on the burner. We have enough butter in there for now to go through. Now you see all this stuff? This is also chicken juice. Alright, so now.
first things first, onions go in. Uh, wrong onions. These. I almost put the bean onions in there. Oh my god, you should smell that. <laughs> that smells so good. Alright, mushrooms in. I'm going to let those cook down a little bit. I actually want to put a little bit more butter in there. Now the onions are there for a little bit of flavor, not for anything else. But I'm going to cook these mushrooms down a little bit and then I'm going to put the wine in. Yes, butter, more butter. Is that better, better, butter? I think it is. <laughs> it is. Sweet, you can make this. You can make this sweet for you and your husband. And you should. This is so good. And look at, see how it took all that glaze off the pan? See how the pan is clean? That's what you want. That means that all the flavor is now going into these mushrooms. That chickeny flavor. It's so good. Right? Okay. Oh no. And you hate onions? Oh. Why? Why? Alright, looks like you're not putting mushrooms or onions in your restaurant. Sweet, the onions are so small in this one. They're little teeny ones, and they're so cooked you probably won't even know they're in there. But the mushrooms, yeah, the mushrooms are in there. Okay, these are almost cooked down, very close to be. I'm going to add our wine in. The wine is going to ferment and out, cook the alcohol out of the wine, and then we're going to add our. Oh, by the way, that reminds me, let's get the stock on. This is, um, this is chicken stock right here. About like a cup and a quarter, a cup and a half, like a cup and a quarter, a cup and a half of stock. Chicken stock. They're so gross. No, they are not sweet. And you know what? If you tasted this, you would not even know there was more onions in there. I can't speak for your husband. There's definitely mushrooms. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you there's no mushrooms. There's definitely mushrooms. But onions. You saw how little I put in. It wasn't a lot, honestly. It really wasn't. And I think a lot of things you get has onions in it. You don't even know it. Like it's cooked in onion. Like, and then you take the onions out for flavor sometimes. Okay, now, you see how the, the mushrooms are now? They're just about cooked. What I'm going to do now is add a little bit of flour in. This will add a little bit of thickness to the sauce, but let me show you a little trick. Take some of your flour and put it in a sifter and a, and a uh, strainer, and then shake it in. This way you won't get any lumps in. And I'm gonna to toss that in. This will give us some thickener to the sauce when we start adding it in. And this also helps to cook the flour down. A little bit more. Not too much, guys, right? And you want it to be this pasty, kind of pasty thing. That's all right. 
because you're cooking the flour on and it won't lump when you add the, the, the liquid in. Okay, we're re now ready to start adding our liquid. So first thing that goes is the wine. There, we open it up. Make sure you use Marsala wine. You can't use any other wine but chicken Marsala. That's why it's called chicken Marsala. Because you have to use Marsala wine. Okay? Don't use anything other than that, alright? Because it adds Marsala wine. has a very distinct smell and flavor to it. Alright, so we're going to add our wine in. And we want to go ahead and proceed to deglaze our pan and get all those sticky bits off and get those into the sauce like that you can already see it starting to thicken already now we're going to add our chicken stock in I'm going to bring that up to a boil. And what we want to do is reduce this down. Now, while we're at it, we're going to put some herbs in there. I'm going to put some parsley in. told you about cutting herbs take your herbs roll them in a tight ball and then kind of roll them into like a joint like a cigar kind of thing like that I don't need that much that's plenty give them another nice chop let's throw those in Now this comes up to a boil. I want to reduce this down, right? Now you keep it up to a boiling state to reduce it down, like about halfway, and then we're going to put the chicken back in it. Oh my god, this smells so good. Holy, I wish you could smell this. Alright, now, I'm going to put a little bit of salt and pepper in here. Alright. And we're gonna, once this is done, we're going to go saute our beans up real quick. And then we're going to be done, to, ready to eat. Yeah, this has got to reduce. It's still too watery yet. I wish you could smell this. My God, it smells so freaking good. Okay. Roll them into a joint, wrap them in paper, light them up. Well, I wouldn't know how to roll a joint. Yeah, right now. Fresh herbs. What means joint? It's so good to roll. I would pretend not to saw spill. Yeah, Pachi, yeah, you, you just pretend you didn't see that. Oh my gosh, it's such a convenience. Uh, yeah. I think I can smell this. Mel, oh my god, you should smell this. It's amazing. Now again, I'm going to reduce the heat now a little bit. And I want now remind now I just want to remember that this is not supposed to be a thick sauce. Okay. That's not supposed to be a thick sauce. But I want to reduce it till it's a little bit thicker. Oh 
Oh my god, it smells so freaking good. I think it needs a little more salt though. I need to take a Mmm. Oh wow. That's freaking good. Uh, but it needs a little bit more wine. And actually, I might want to put a little slurry in there. It needs a little more wine in there. I can't. Um, and I'm going to put a small slurry in there and sit it up a smidge. So let me show you how to make a slurry. If anybody doesn't know. You want to thicken something up. Take like a tablespoon or a cornstarch. Don't use flour, use cornstarch. A dab of water, not a lot, like about that much. Right? Mix that up in there. Now remember, if you use this a slurry, you have to make sure that the liquid is boiling at a boiling point, because if you don't, it won't work. The cornstarch works off of heat, right? And flour works off of moisture, so you gotta make sure it's, I need just a little bit more water. Little thick. Now, if you just put flour in there now, it'll make lumps in it. You don't want lumps in your sauce, right guys? So, you put a little bit of slurry in there, a little at a time, and then stir it while it's boiling. Wow, look at that. Instant thickness. Oh my God. Look at that. Like magic. Like freaking magic, guys. Look at that. See when you when you push it up, it takes time for it to close up. That's how you can tell your sauce is getting thick. Yeah. Oh my God, this is so freaking good. Okay, now at this point, we put our chicken back in. Uh, let me tell everybody we're ready to eat. Now I'm gonna end the stream too, probably. Once we play the dish, let me show you how we put. We're gonna make this beans now. Let's put the sauce off to the side, and we're going to make our green beans, okay? A little bit more butter. More butter. That's what she said. Echo Fox, say hi. Hey, hello. In all seriousness, the only food I know how to make is cream tuna. This is my white sauce with milk and starch at peas and tuna. I'm good with that. <laughs> all right. All right, we're going to saute our beans up. So, hot pan. I actually have to turn it up soon. From there, we go a little bit of salt and pepper. Everybody good? Butter, yes. <laughs> you know what? Um, like Julia Child, who is the, the most, my beloved idol, Julia Child, that's her soul, that's her soul. I swear by butter and cream, and I swear by it. <laughs> butter and cream is definitely, that's where it's at. And I'm feeling pretty good off of this, just to let you know. Okay. Woo! Okay, so, 
Do not put your garlic in too early, guys. Put your garlic in closer to the end. If you put your garlic in now, nobody likes burnt garlic. Burnt garlic is nasty, okay? And it's uh, stinky. Onions in. I should have put the onions in before, but that's okay. That works just fine. Here's the garlic from before, remember? Uh, here. Garlic, fresh garlic. This sauce, look at how thick that sauce is. Now, it's not supposed to be thick, like thin kind of sauce, right? This is beautiful. My God. All right. Uh, where are we at? Running down and more water. There's a cookie in the room where it's like the cookie fried rice. You can cook the garlic so it leaves on the pole. Ah, no way. Nope. Burnt garlic is nasty. It's not good. Like, burnt garlic is not good. Do not do it. Roast is alright, it's something else, but I'm not do it. Alright. Alright, these are about ready to. Oops. Uh, add the garlic now. I'm going to turn the heat off. I'm going to add the garlic in. Toss it up. And the garlic green beans are ready. Okay, voila. Now I'm gonna plate one up for you. I'm gonna plate a whole dish up for you. Let's move this stuff out of there. Don't worry, I'll clean everything later because Mr. Zaldi will not let you get away with out of it. So. Let's plate these puppies up. I'm going to take it off the heat so they don't burn. Uh, here, let's do that. Oh, wrong oven. Uh, actually, these potatoes are here. Actually, I want the potatoes first. Oh my God, those look amazing. Woo, baby. All right. Oh, look at those, look at those potatoes, guys. Do you see that? Those are freaking good. All right, I'm gonna put those, some of those on first. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll use this. How's everybody doing, all right? Everybody doing good? So this is how I would plate it. You can see that. That's kind of how I would plate this meal. 
roasted herb roasted potatoes, chicken marsala, garlic green beans. Yeah? You like? <laughs> I found her via moist critical making fun of her. That's a sexy play, right? You all like? That would be summer. <laughs> yes. Thank you, ma'am. That would be $45, please. <laughs> that was so good. So good summer. A good call there. Thank you, Spooks. Thank you, thank you. Now, you could probably sprinkle a little bit of green on there, a little bit of parsley or whatever to make it look good. But this is a rustic plating. It's not meant to be fancy, so that's pretty much it. All right. So we made deviled eggs. Um, Mr. Mac, I'm going to try one. Let me show you that. We made deviled eggs. We made... Chicken marsala, herb roasted potatoes, and garlic green beans. Thank you, Summer. Anthony Foma. I never do that. Who give one green bean hot potato? <laughs> wow, well, I don't know. You make me a wolf drool, you know? Okay, awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. $20 tip, thank you, Lily. Right, let me go back and chat a little bit. You're salivating now, Prof? And Prof, this is so good, man. It's so good. Thank you so much, Grumpy Old Man. I appreciate it. Thank you, Helga. Thank you, Mustard. Thank you, Pachi. You're hungry, Lily? Yeah. I hope you can get a better shot at this, but I wish you can get it's, I, I'm, you know, I'm looking at a regular small preview here. Yeah, right? <laughs> You're hungry, Lily? Yeah. I wish you could smell and taste it, 